In lab today, we're going to be determining the inductance of an inductor by measuring the phase difference between two AC signals. So here's the circuit. I have a 100 ohm resistor in series with this 1000 micro Henry inductor, and then I have a wire hanging off I can attach leads to. The circuit is pretty simple. We're going to have a AC voltage source and it's going to be going through our inductor and then through our resistor. And if you look in the text, uh, if, if we write this voltage as a vector and we have some kind of voltage going across the resistor and some kind of voltage going across the inductor, from our text that the voltage going across the resistor is, is just the current times the resistance. Going across the inductor, instead of resistance, we have something that's going to add a phase difference here of J omega L. So let's call the voltage going across both of them as V total, and we know that we can use vector addition to see that V total is going to be equal to voltage across the resistor plus voltage across the inductor. Now if we plug in the equations that we have for the resistance, we have I times R here, and now we have I times J omega L, so we can factor out the I, and we see that we have real part for the resistance plus the complex part, J omega L, for going across the inductor. Now, if I draw this graphically, what's happening is we have, if you want to think about a complex plane here, we have, okay, so here's going to be VR is going to be completely real, and for the inductor, we're going to have VL is going to be completely imaginary, and looks like V total is going to be the sum of both of those. And what we're going to measure is the angular difference between V total and VR. The inductance this is going to be J omega L times I. And for the resistance, this is just going to be R times I. I can see that the tangent of the angle is just the magnitude omega L over R. So what we can measure is we can measure the angle and we can measure the frequency. And if I rewrite this a little bit, tangent of theta equals, and what if I group things like two pi L over R and have the frequency here since omega is two pi F. After you've made a bunch of measurements, I can plot this as be the uh, Y and this is the slope. And then here's my x. So I should, should get a linear relationship as I'm changing the frequency. If I plot the tangent of theta versus frequency, I should get a straight line. And so the slope is going to be equal to 2 pi L over R. So if we can measure R with our multimeter and just get the slope of our line, then we can determine what the inductance is just from the slope of our plot. Before we get started with a lot of measurements, let's look qualitatively at the behavior of the circuit over a really wide range of frequencies. So we're going to start, I have this at 100 hertz right now, and at this really low frequency, the impedance of the inductor is very low. It's behaving mostly like a wire. So the voltage across the resistor by itself is almost exactly the same as the voltage across both the resistor and the inductor in series. So there's two curves here, but 
they're so overlapped you can't tell any difference. So let me increase the frequency here. This is at 100 hertz. I'm going to go up to 1000 hertz and I'm going to have to change the horizontal scale so we can uh, see what's going on more clearly. And we can see that at 1000 hertz we can start to see a phase shift between the two. Okay, now let's go up to say 2000, 3000, 4000. And now we can see the higher the frequency, the greater the phase shift because the impedance of this inductor is getting higher and higher and the voltage across that inductor is always gonna be 90 degrees out of phase with the current. Okay, let's keep increasing the uh, frequency here. Okay, at uh, 10 kilohertz, let me change the horizontal scale again. We can see that the phase shift is even greater. And also notice the uh, amplitude, the, the blue line is the voltage across only the resistor. Uh, that is dropping relative to the uh, complete voltage. So let's keep going up uh, now, uh, up to say 20 kilohertz. 30 kilohertz, 40 kilohertz, you can see the phase shift is getting higher and higher. And as we go to really high frequencies, the impedance of the inductor is getting to be greater than the resistance of the resistor. And so this phase shift, as I go, keep going up, the phase shift will approach 90 degrees for the entire signal. So you can see if I uh, zoom in here that the phase difference between the uh, yellow signal and the blue signal is approaching 90 degrees as I get up to uh, uh, the 100 kilohertz range. To measure the phase shift, what you want to do is measure the delay between when one signal starts and when the next signal starts. So we'll first consider an AC signal. Here's a sine wave that starts, crosses the uh, zero point at time equals zero. Now let's consider another another voltage that has exactly the same frequency but is shifted in time by some small amount delta t so we can measure the difference in time when it crosses the zero point as delta t what we're interested in is the angular difference what fraction of 360 degrees is that phase shift if we know the full period is t we can get the phase shift by knowing that delta t over t is going to be the same fraction as the angular phase shift divided by 360 degrees before we get started with our frequency measurements let's look at the resistance of the resistor it's marked as a 100 ohm resistor but when I measure it with a multimeter, it looks like it's just a little over 99 ohms. So we can use that in our calculations. And when we take our measurements, what we're interested in is the range where the phase difference is changing quite a bit. So at really low frequencies, the two signals are lined up so there's almost no phase difference at all. And as we get up to really high frequencies, the phase difference approaches 90 degrees, so it'll get close to 90 degrees. So what I'm gonna do is look at the frequency range between about a five kilohertz up to uh, maybe 50 kilohertz, where that phase difference is changing the most quickly. And I'm gonna measure the time difference, uh, the time lag between the two signals. So here we're at five kilohertz, and I'll leave it up to you to figure out what the period is for five kilohertz, but I can measure the time difference from where the yellow signal, that's the full voltage going across both the resistor and the inductor, where that crosses zero on the increasing line, and then where the blue signal, that's, that's the one that's only over the resistor, what, what the time difference between those two signals is. So let's uh, look at the blue signal. I'm going to shift that cursor over here to get what the zero time is. I already set the first one. Okay, so right in there, that's 
oscillating about zero, and that's happening 8.66 microseconds later. So to figure out the phase difference, what you want to do is take that 8.66 microseconds and divide by the full time of the uh, full period, and that'll tell you how many degrees out of 360 the difference between the two signals are. So that's the, the angle that we're interested in. Okay, now I'm going to change the frequency going up to... Okay, so here's 10 kilohertz now, and let's uh, re-zero this first cursor. It's, it's right at the, the zero crossing. And let's look at the second cursor. I'm not going to have to adjust it very much. Okay, right in here, which is 8.26 microseconds later. So that delta T isn't too different, but, a, but the fraction of the full period is quite a bit different there. Okay, now let's go up to 15 kilohertz. So there's 15 kilohertz. Okay, our zero is still good. The delay at 15 kilohertz looks like 7.46 microseconds. Okay, now here it's at 20 kilohertz. At 20 kilohertz, it looks like 6.66 microseconds. Now I'm going to change the horizontal scale, so hopefully we get a little bit more accuracy there. I go up to 25 kilohertz. At 25 kilohertz, it looks like the time difference is 5.94 microseconds. At 30 kilohertz, I get the time difference is 5.3 microseconds. At 35 kilohertz, I get the time difference is 4.82 microseconds. And this is 40 kilohertz, and I'm measuring 4.42 microseconds. This is 45 kilohertz, and I see 4.02 microseconds. In 50 kilohertz, I get 3.70 microseconds.